Hi, I'm Ron Polk, home builder and finished carpenter, and this is the Ultimate Miter Stand. The Ultimate Miter Stand began just like the Ultimate Workbench in the virtual wood shop of SketchUp. I was able to rip and route and dado and then assemble various designs until I was satisfied and ready to move my plans out to the shop and build what you're about to see. In the short configuration, it'll fit on even the tightest jobs. It's only 8 feet long, 18 inches wide, and that along with the Ultimate Workbench, I'm able to install cabinets, do closet packages, stair rail systems, mantles, and any number of finished carpenter tasks where I don't need the extended uh, material support or the extended fence. The 18 inch depth comes in really handy when I'm doing wider material. I can place the material the wider material on the side and it's completely supported so I can work on adjusting and getting my cutting, keeping my hands safe rather than, than distracting myself trying to hold up the material when it's cut loose when it might want to tip off a narrower, um, a narrower extension. The saw only fits in one place. It sits on these rails. It's bolted down with two bolts and large nuts that store on board. The rails um, beyond stiffening the structure, hold the saw up to the exact height and, and the position that the saw goes. So the saw fits in very tightly on this. And also the design of this particular uh, miter stand is, is, is for the Capex saw, the um, Festival Capex, which I can't say enough good things about this saw. But everything is cut and designed to give the saw complete and total movement. There's no restriction on the movement at all. And even uh, because it's a compound miter saw and the, the head has to roll over, the fence on the saw has to move out of the way because it makes contact. So for that reason, the miter saw fences are set behind. Um, historically, I've tried to line these up in some of the ones I've built and the ones I've purchased so these line up but I find no ad advantage to doing that um, as long as the material you're uh, cutting makes complete contact with the saw's fence, you're going to get an accurate cut. So having this fence continue out just means you have to try to line it up and also it just gets in your way if you have long material that has a, you know, a bit of bend to it. The um, other advantage to having it set back is when you do have to pull out the saw's fence so you can roll it over and make the cuts. Or if you just want to remove it all together. If this fence were lined up, you wouldn't be able to do that. When I install this and I set it on the dimension that I'm looking for and I crank it down, when I slide material into it, there's no deflection or no movement. This stop has a wide two inch clamping surface and the um, back clamping board is bolted through and has a bit of pivot to it and when the pressure is applied with a carriage bolt installed backwards through a T-nut and, and a large uh, plastic T-handle I get a, a nice amount of pressure and I don't have to worry if I'm going to do a lot of repetitive cuts and I want to shove the material hard into it and make sure that I'm getting the exact cut. The um, holes in the surface, just like the um, ultimate work table, are designed for clamping. So we can use the, um, the Festool clamps or similar clamps to hold down material. Say if I'm using as this is additional workspace for sanding or routing, um, I can clamp that material down. But primarily what I use this for is when, I'm, when I am doing when I'm it's on and I'm doing crown and I'm cutting it in position, I will um, usually have a spacer that's uh, designed for the exact spring angle of my material put it on and then I have a, a crown stop board that will go on tight to that and then I can clamp this side and that side and then pull this out and my crown molding will then slide in and be at the perfect spring angle so I don't have to worry about rolling it in the box and getting it right. I know I put it in and it's right and I can just focus on the actual cut and the length of the cut. So now it's time to install a room full of crown 
So you're going to need to go to the long configuration. Drop that in the dovetail. Put that on there and then I would adjust the height if necessary and it's ready to go. When I'm cutting base and crown, um, I cope my inside cuts. And so with the, and I use the Collins coping foot on my jigsaw. And with the um, tool storage available beneath the surface on the um, miter stand, I keep my uh, coping saw there with a long extension cord. And then for doing crown, uh, Collins uh, talks about or provides designs for a, uh, a fixture that you, that you nest the uh, crown in that keeps it at the right angle so when you're doing the cope, it's easy to follow. I have that fixture and the saw and I simply bring it to the end that I need to cope, make the cope, put that back and then the material goes down on the stand. With this long fixture, I can have 16 foot or longer material stored there and just work with it and you know cut it, cope it, store it, haul it in. And I'm not taking 16 foot goods and trying to move them around. So again, that's just to point out that don't overlook the sawhorses. I think again, they are, in my work uh, flow, they are the most important part of any miter saw stand stock the material at the saw so you're not moving around back and forth. Thanks for taking a few minutes and watching this. I look forward to your comments and I'll try to answer all of your questions.